All right, everybody, this is Ross. I have a fig variety here that I'm gonna review for you guys, and it doesn't have a big name, at least right now, um, but it will, I'm sure, after this video, uh, because I'm gonna explain to you guys how amazing this particular variety is. It's called um, De La Senora Hivernenka. And I think you can honestly forget about all the other figs. Just forget about them. You know, all the other big name hype figs that are out there, if you're into collecting, um, you need to have this variety, without a doubt. I don't care where you guys live, uh, this is one that you absolutely need to try. And the reason for that is because this variety has a very, very short hang time. And I have talked about the hang time in other videos, but really it's not a, uh, it's not a topic that many growers, if any, ever bring up. Even Pons himself, I have never, uh, heard him mention this in his book, but the hang time I would def I would define, at least as you could define this in other fruits as well, but in the fig, you define it by when the fig is green and hard, like you see some on this tree here, when the fig is green and hard, one day you'll see that the, the fig, if you're out here every day, you're observing your trees, you'll notice that the fig will start to swell. It'll start to get larger. It'll turn color. When it turns color and gets larger like that, I consider that day one of the hang time. So um, day one till it's perfectly ripe, how many days did that take? So I count, I come out here every day and I count for each individual variety because as we know, as fig growers, we like to have our figs as ripe as possible. And also uh, we like to be out here really on top of them because every day that is on the tree really matters. We want to pick them at the most optimal time. We want to pay attention to the rain, the critters, mold, maybe it's split, I don't know. So we pay attention really closely to these varieties. And I, I used to count, I still do, I count the number of days, the hang time as I define it, for the amount of time that this fig hangs on the tree before you pick it. After swelling, too perfectly ripe. And you could argue that on a tree, any of the varieties, that around day one or day two of its swelling, very little is gonna happen to that fig. You may get a lot of rain and maybe it could split around day two or it could have a crack in the side. But normally day one and day two is pretty solid. It's still almost like it's green and hard like this. You know, when it's green and hard, nothing's gonna get at them, no birds no critters, nothing's gonna bother them because they're still filled with sap. And if they're filled with sap like this, like they are in day one and day two, you can't eat them, you can't mess with them, really nothing bothers them. Although you can, as I said, you can see them split and whatnot, and something can definitely occur. But however, uh, I would argue that on most varieties, day one and two, it's pretty much like you're good. There's really nothing that can happen. Um, as you progressively go further and further along, as every day that goes by, there's a higher and higher chance that something can happen, right? So you're always trying to fight, at least for me, I'm trying to fight this idea of picking a fig at its most optimum ripeness, but the further along I go, I know that the further along, there's a higher chance I actually something can happen. So there's a little bit of a give and take. There's a little bit of a compromise that has to happen. You could say, all right, well, Violet de Bordeaux, as an example, I like to pick them around day eight or day nine. I like to have them really shriveled up on the tree. But I know that if I let them get to day seven or even past day seven, I'm going to struggle potentially with rain. Maybe some ants are going to get to it. Maybe there's going to be some cracking in it that's actually going to form some mold as my Violet de Bordeaux actually frequently form some green mold in the cracking or at the eye. So I know that I have to compromise. I know I have to pick them, for the most part, a little bit earlier than I, I would hope. And some varieties, on, you know, fortunately, they have the superior genetics to really fight off most of the, the weather events. This variety right here is called uh, Verdino del Nord. And this guy will actually dry on the tree around day seven. You'll see cork tints in the fig that indicate that it's actually a legitimately dried fig like you'd see at the store, that cork color will show up on these figs around day seven. 
So they dry on the tree very, very easily and very quickly. And that's with a hang time of, day, of seven days. I have other varieties that are just ripe at day seven. I have other varieties that take nine days, 12 days, 15 days. If you really experiment with the wide variety of genetics out there, some varieties you'll know, if you count, they just take a very, very long time before they're perfectly ripe. So my point is, is that there are some varieties with superior genetics in this sense, and we never talk about it. It's a shame. We never talk about the hang time because if you think about this statistically, I have a variety here behind me, which we're going to talk about, De La Senora Hivernenka, which has a three or four day hang time. It really swells on the tree. And then around day three or four, I've counted this for multiple seasons now, um, it's ripe, which is incredible. I think that's absolutely incredible. Um, even in the fall, when things start to cool down, this fig continues to ripen with ease and has a short hang time. Whereas others, if it gets really cold out here in the fall, because we have summer-like temperatures right now, you know, it's 90 some degrees right now, I'm sweating my brains out. Um, the figs ripen very quickly because the meta metabolism of the trees are running very quickly. But in the fall, things slow down. And when that metabolism slows down so significantly, the hang time actually increases. So you may have a different hang time in the summer than you do in the fall. You may have a different hang time than you do in, let's say, the Pacific Northwest than you do in another climate. So, um, you know, I've certainly I've noticed that with my Brabas as well, is that earlier in the season when the Brabas ripen, they seem to need a, a longer hang time than, let's say, the main crop does. Um, so as an example here, this variety, as I said, only needs three or four days. And I want to show you the figs right now because I've counted them. And to me, what this means statistically is on day one or day two. So here's the fig we're going to pick today. This is day four. This is what the fig looks like at day zero. It hasn't yet swelled. It's still green. It's still hard. Day one had happened, and then now this is day two. So day two you're seeing some size, it's still very hard. There's some minor cracking in the fig, which is quite prevalent in this variety. And then day three happens, and then day four, this is day four. So I don't have day one and day three to show you, but the proof's right there. And what I've noticed, in all honesty, is that this variety, because statistically, it has such a, a short you know, uh, hang time, statistically, very little can happen to this fig in terms of critters, insects, pests, rain, climatic events, spoilage, because it's just not on the tree, guys, for a very long time. If I have other varieties that are out here, let's say Villa de Bordeaux, as I said, it just, a lot of things can happen to these figs the longer they hang on the tree, and they need that, right? Here's a Villa de Bordeaux down here that got attacked by ants and they got through the skin and now the interior is exposed to the elements. Here we also have some mold, some green mold on the bottom. So not ideal. You, don't, you know, if you think about how many figs, you got a hundred figs on your tree, how many of the hundred are you actually gonna eat based off of pests, critters, climatic events? I would argue this is one of the figs that you will eat almost all the figs off of. And there's not just this variety here. There's other varieties I have that have a very short hang time as well. I've noticed um, Rasty's Persian Unknown or Iranian Candy. And we've also got LSU Champagne. Both of those ripen around day four, I've noticed. So day four seems to be the earliest that I've ever experienced some of these varieties to ripen. The, with a really short hang time of three days, you could maybe argue on day three, they should be picked for commercial potential. Um, if you're going to grow them in a commercial setting, you probably would pick them on day three. If you wanted them to even let them hang longer, you could, and they'd probably get even better and sweeter. And I do think this variety has some drying capabilities, but not a whole lot. But 
the reason why it struggles, I think, with drying and why I would actually say that it doesn't have the best rain resistance is that it has very large cracks in the skin. This one I'm gonna pick here, for whatever reason, doesn't have many cracks in it. And that's interesting. There is actually some ants getting to this, but uh, it's not a significant amount of damage like you saw in the Villa de Bordeaux. So this one, I would argue, even though there is ants on it, it's not a significant problem. And I could also use a product called Tanglefoot if I really was worried about this. Uh, but I don't think, if you read through Pons' book, De La Senora Hivernenka, um, you'll read all of the growing characteristics that, in all honesty, I will not know for a fact as the growing characteristics change quite significantly as time progresses. You really need a mature tree before you can accurately identify the growing characteristics. Um, so even though Pons has mentioned in his book that it has good rain resistance, it has good split resistance, which I find to be true, I don't agree that the rain resistance is all that great because it has very large cracks and those large cracks can expose the interior. If the interior is exposed, the rain resistance is diminished to nothing. So I would argue against that. Um, I don't know the level of vigor. It's probably about average. The productivity is probably about average. You'd have to look it up guys. Look in Pons' book, look on his website and you'll see all the information there that you need. Now, not only does this fig have a very short hang time, but it's also extremely tasty. Look at that. That's just ridiculous. I'm sorry. So it's a very, very tasty fig that constantly, I think, is overlooked, not just for the flavor, but also because of the short hang time. And it is a late ripening fig as well. I, we did give it a head start here. I will. I do want to mention a couple things, I guess, before I eat this. Um, it did receive a head start in the greenhouse, a significant start. So that's why it's ripening here in early August. I got it by early August. Most late varieties or very late varieties, I would actually classify it as a very late variety because if you look in Pons' book, it ripens around September 22nd, I believe, is the date that he has in there, which in all honesty <clears throat> is quite late. So uh, if you have varieties out here that ripen by September 22nd, that's really when I would classify it as. And I would say probably sometime around August 1st is a very early variety. Uh, August 15th is a mid-season variety. And then somewhere around September 1st is a late variety. So this one's even after what I would classify as a very late variety, which is September 15th. But with the help of the greenhouse, it's done really well. August 1st, I can't argue with that. I'm air layering it actually, because I want to put one in the ground. I find that this one's going to hold up so well in the fall weather here, even if it does ripen very late, I would argue it's one of the best figs you can have at that time of the year. So for me, I think it's going to fulfill a gap that's really important later in my season to harvest at that time of the year. Um, so it's very late, I would say, uh, you know, you got to watch out for that. I don't know when it's going to ripen without a head start. I don't know. But I would, I would say that if you don't have a head start in my climate, it may not be the best variety for you. But uh, if you can give it a head start, I would say grow this fig anywhere. Uh, anywhere in the country. Um, so it's very tasty. Let's try it right now. I think there's probably one or two other things I want to mention. But if you want, really want to find out information about that variety, you got to look at Ponce's book. You know, all the growing characteristics. I only really talked about the hang time. And I'm going to talk about the flavor right now. Yeah. It's very good. And I would argue it's one of the best tasting figs. So it's easily, this fig's easily a four out of five. I think it's a 4.5 out of five. And I think it has potential to be a five. It's very, very good. It's thick, it's jammy. Um, 
not necessarily that dense because it's very juicy. I found over the over the years that this one has not necessarily so much density because it's it's got so much nectar in here. There's a lot of honey. It's quite sweet. There's almost no acidity. It's got a nice berry flavor. It's up there with the best of them. And I do want to mention one last thing actually about this variety that I've learned is that De La Senora Hivernenka goes by many names. Um, it's actually, as Pons had mentioned in his book, it's a commercial variety in Spain. So um, because it's a commercial variety like Brown Turkey, Black Mission, Panache, they've really been spread around the world and spread around all over the place. Uh, and because of that, they've adapted to other locations and therefore uh, there's many names for it. And there's even different growing characteristics. Ponce had, Pons had sent an email to a friend of mine as he inquired about this topic and asked him, well, I've noticed that uh, a couple of figs are the same that you have in your book. And Pons responded that uh, Mora Dubu, Koldadam Katat, and also De La Senora Hivernenka are of the same grouping. Uh, they are basically synonyms, except that they show different growing characteristics, which then makes them a different variety. As I have basically mentioned many times about the hardy Chicago types, the Violet de Bordeaux types, uh, the you know brown turkey figs, the all kinds of different families and groupings we've mentioned that are in our spreadsheet. So it's a similar idea in that they're not exactly the same. And you may want to have to choose one over the other. I don't know. You'd have to test them out and grow them for years to decide which one's the best. But I'll tell you, this one here so far performs exceptionally well with its very short hang time. And I've looked in this book. It has supposed to be the best rain resistance, the best split resistance of the three. There are other varieties that I, I do believe are probably very similar. Burgonia is another one. There's some from Thierry that are coming in here, Labritia and Oriola, or I don't know how to pronounce those two figs, but those two I have a feeling are exactly the same. What you'll notice as defining characteristic of this fig, I find, first off is the shape, um, the interior, but you'll also notice that the cracking is quite, uh, is quite distinct. It has usually large cracks, many cracks, vertical, horizontal cracks, you name it, it's got a lot of them. And you'll see that definitely in Pons' book if you look up those three varieties I mentioned. Um, I'm gonna try personally to, to get as many of those as I think is possible to see if they all share the same hang time that this variety does. And I'm also gonna be trying to propagate those, this one here, as much as I can, um, at least in this, uh, this upcoming growing season is to try to get as many copies of it because uh, I'm going to definitely try to put a couple of them in the ground. And uh, yeah, that's, I think, one of the best varieties you could grow here. I don't know if I really made my case that well, but I'll tell you the hang time is, in, is insane.